Okay, let's give this a moment so that everyone can come in. Hello, Becky. Welcome. Is that Becky? The Becky I know? <laughs> Let me know. <laughs> All right. All right. Hello, Nicole. Good morning from Canada. Welcome. Hi. All right. Amazing to have Becky right here flying wing tip to wing tip with me. I love it. All right. So I'm going to just give everyone a moment to join in. Hello, Els. Oh my goodness. Hello, hello, hello. Ah, I'm just so happy to see familiar names popping up. If you can hear me all good, give me a heart. Give me a yes, yes, yes. Tell me that you can hear me all good. I would love and appreciate you so much for doing that. Just to make sure that um, the music or the, you know, my voice is transmitting perfectly. Okay. Hello, Jenny. Welcome, welcome. All right, let's give this a little moment and we will start at my time 4.04. How about that? That's pretty cool, isn't it? Like we can move through some of the symbols that are, you know, going to anchor in our intentions for today in a powerful way. And while we're at it, please let me know what you, where you're coming in from, where you're streaming in from, say hello and i would love to interact with you in the field and i see guest saying hi beautiful um and nicole hi goddess is that the nicole i know let me know <laughs> yes oh perfect i love that you're all tuning in through different platforms like i'm on here and also on instagram so just in case you want to switch around do a little switcheroo that's all good okay all right all right ah, all right let's let's start to ground into the energy in this powerful shimmering field that we're in and we're going to greet in the sacred geometry for this space hello lisa all right in southwest iowa that's so cool. That is so cool. Everyone else, if you would like to share where in the world you are streaming in from, please do. I always love to see how incredibly connected we are, especially in this powerful golden age of Aquarius, where we, in, we literally are multidimensionally connected in this space, in this physical dimension, and of course, in the cosmos as well which is what we're going to dive into today in a bit hi hind beautiful woman gorgeous 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 welcome welcome to my open house and i just want to say i'm really grateful i'm really really so grateful that you are here because this is a time that i would usually actually be home i am originally from malaysia and I, I usually just fly home and I'm I would usually be celebrating with my family. I'm just going to tune down the music so you can hear me. And we would have scrumptious, like sumptuous reunion dinners and we will have our family together. So it really feels so special because I feel like you're my family and you're here with me sitting in my tea room together. And if you haven't yet, I would highly encourage you to maybe set up a space with yourself in the next, let's say 55, 45 to 55 minutes and we will actually go into a short tea ceremony to open up the space, which is going to bring in this beautiful, it's like rolling out the red carpet into a portal that is going to be pure creation, pure, it's like dripping in gold. That is exactly how I'm seeing it, how I'm experiencing it. And all the goodness is going to be anchored in as more of us, when we collectively come in with the same intention as the crystalline vessel that is truly the the capstone the one who is here to be the alchemist and we're going to go all we're going to go into this okay we're going to merge this is what i would say we're going to merge 
heaven and earth and bring it into one because that's ultimately what the whole spirit of the dragon is going to be about. So Becky is in Minneapolis, yes, yes. I do know, but we are all here together, so it's good to introduce yourself to everyone because that's how we roll here, yes. And else joining in from Belgium, which I also know, and I am so glad that you're sharing as well. So it's so good to have everyone feel each other's energy and literally be in this field together. It's very important that we sit together in that way today, whether it is physically, I mean, we're doing this non-physically, obviously, it is still so important that we set that intention. Intention is everything, okay? So, first things first, a couple of things here. You are so welcome to ask any questions. Literally, anything that's happening in your life, anything that's related to what you're hearing me speak about. And of course, this is an, an open house, so we are coming in with celebration. Uh, the vibes of celebration, the vibes of really not just like, oh yeah, I'm celebrating, but like literally anchoring in the frequency of love, anchoring in the frequency of true bliss, and not just hope, but raising it one bar at least above hope, knowing it's that knowing we're opening a portal into knowing who we are as the sovereign being, as the one who is and has never been separate from source. Okay, so this is where we're going to ride through today. And so if you have any questions, like I said, there, are, there it, this is an open house. You can share, you can ask, you can interact. It's all here for us. Okay, trust that you will get exactly what you need in this space. All right. And when we are in that space, we are truly opening up to a frequency of what we know of in the physical dimension as unconditional love. And I love that Nicole saying that it feels so good to be here. It literally is. If anything, I wish for you to feel good. That's really all there is because when you feel that in you, you know, that feeling, that experience run through your entire body, it is setting the field up for something truly spectacular to ride through, okay? So first things first, if this is your first time with me, welcome. My name is Li Ying and I am a Cha Dao or what you would know of in English as the Way of Tea ceremonial keeper. My lineage runs through to the shamanic, what you would know of as ancient China. So that lineage carries a lot of different influences, primarily Taoism and Zen Buddhism. But what I find that my experience has really opened me up to is different timelines. It literally has opened me up to so many different dimensions of what tea as a medicine, as a being, has truly been that what I am here to bring forward is truly a different perspective. So it's going to help you to not just anchor in who you are in this physical aspect, but also your true divine blueprint, like your true essence, really. And even though in the new age world, and I'm just going to say it that way, in the new age spiritual world and context it may sound like wow you know astral projection or traveling different timelines or opening up the akashic records like all these things are like wow so fantastical and so like crazy maybe like nobody's talking about this it sounds so extraordinary maybe um but in my world it's actually something that i have full intention to lead you to a place or guide you to a place rather because you are a leader you are already a master there's nothing to fix nothing you need to add on to yourself for this it's all truly within you and my intention is really to guide you into a place where you can really see for yourself that everything in your external environment is absolutely 
and simply a reaction to the action itself and you are that action i can speak in that way yes so you are a fractal of the divine all of us are a holographic version of what is known as source what is known as the divine consciousness the cosmos the universe or Tao. yes so when we come from that perspective it allows us to merge with the divine mind the divine mind or the cosmic mind your cosmic magnificence has always been right there and as the vessel as the vessel here as the physical matter you are here to bring that magnificence forth and so when you're seeing things in your external circumstance and we're going to go deep into this because it will lead us so it's a, such an important um, conversation absolutely what you see in your circumstance whether it's something that you absolutely was like okay this is my desire and it's here or hmm this is getting hard like this is harder than i thought or oh my gosh i never expected that to happen and then this came in and it ruined my day and all of that i'm speaking in different variations there could be more and if you want to share obviously please do but if you ever have in in any moments become aware of these moments in your life or maybe you're looking back at it in hindsight right now i want you to drop in to a place here with us right now and merge with the omnipresence of all that is and you are all that is you are that however for us to walk through to that to 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 move towards that and that's my kettle i'm just going to make sure that it's still boiling give me a moment Arr! see everything is in real time guys not not filtering out anything <laughs> so when we merge with that omnipresence we are able to see exactly what is going on in the polarity and the duality that is occurring in our physical dimension in our circumstances and when you become aware this is the key, the key that unlocks the portal to higher timelines is that you decide, you choose the higher timeline. You get to say, this moment here, this thing that's happening right here, I see it for what it is and I choose the higher timeline. And what that would look like can be different for everyone. But what I have been personally experiencing is I have to embrace what is going on here and really turn inward and ask myself instead of looking outside of me and saying, well, this didn't happen because they, they are not, not giving me the, the opportunity to do that or um, this happened and I have, I'm helpless, I can't do anything about it, and I give up. Instead of that, I chose to come inward. And let me tell you, it wasn't easy. That's the, that's the real honest part. It wasn't easy until it became easy. Because here's the thing, I see this a lot, and you've probably seen it, right? Like the parts of, you know, where we go into okay, I, I want to change my life or I have affirmations, I have mantras, I have all the things and I even hired coaches, I even hired mentors, I even had all the programs, all of that, yes? And you've got this app here, you've got all the apps, literally, the, all the information at your fingertips. Anything you want, anything you want to know is at your fingertips. And yet it feels like, why is this not, there is no staying power. Why is this not anchoring in? And even further, I can go deeper where I experienced it myself is that I feel like I'm 
I'm almost waiting for the ball to drop. It's like, ah, this is so good. I have the love of my life and everything, and I hope that I don't fuck it up. <laughs> I hope that I don't screw it up, <laughs> right? And this has been me for so long, and until the point where I had my awakening, and I will go into that story a little bit for all those who are joining me for the first time, of course. But when I did, it was like a moment of, oh, wait a minute. I am the creator of my reality. I'm the one who is setting the frequency for what I'm here to create. And if this moment right now, where I'm standing, the physical circumstances do not match what I've always felt is true within me, I get to choose to go into a higher timeline through this alchemical point, through this activation. It can come as a form of a, a trigger. It can come as a form of something that completely fell apart. Could be your body, your health, could be your wealth, could be anything, your relationship and business. These are what I call alchemical points. And it is very important for us to rise out, to rise to that, to that omnipresence, to see for what it is that is happening here. And this is so this is and this is so important for me to emphasize, it's not bypassing. It's not bypassing. Because, and Lisa, this is something you would want to shift, you know, from speaking whatever we say, whatever we put out, our thoughts and emotions, when they match, they become your physical creation. So when you say something like that, can you move into a higher frequency right now and share with us in the comment instead of I am such a screw up? What is the next level of a higher frequency that you can go into from there? Yes, let's do this together. Let's transmute this together. And Hilda is saying, I shift that mindset by being grateful. Yes, so grateful gratitude is a very potent and I would say 3D portal into the higher dimensions. And when I speak about that, I'm actually speaking in a very linear way, but I want you to always have it in the back of your mind that everything that I'm talking about in the quantum field is absolutely non-linear. We are always in a spiral of creation and destruction and the void. And we are always moving through that spiral upwards. We're never really spiraling downwards. Unless, of course, this is a totally different conversation where we are talking about lower frequency attachments and entities and karma and all of that. But what I'm, what I'm talking about here is really speaking to most of you who identify as ascended masters or ascended multidimensional beings um, or ascending star seeds, all of these words that you will hear and you will get a frequency hit in your body because you know that it is your truth. You are a goddess, you are a priestess, you are a mystic. Ultimately, you are all that is. And when I speak in that quantum field, that spiral, even talking about the past and the future doesn't actually exist because everything is here now. Every single thing is here now. Can you feel this? Can you feel this power as we move so symbolically today into a cosmologically aligned time when the dragon, the wood dragon, literally is streaming in. And even for people who do not celebrate the lunar new year in your culture, you can feel that something feels like the true new year. I'm seeing this all around my, my reality. It could be a different thing for your reality where maybe for you, this is an opportunity to check in. Like, ah, why am I not feeling this energy at all? Or if you are feeling it and you're super ready to rise, yes, 
we are ready to rise because this energy is right here to support us. The cosmic gates are open and these gates are all you. You are the stargates that are going to create this mass, this weight that is going to create and catapult us into the next dimension. You are creating this field, your threads, your frequency are all creating these threads that are interweaving in the field. And that is catapulting all of us into the next dimension, which is known as the 5D, the, five, the fifth dimension, the new earth. And this is so interesting because like some of us, I, like me, I can already feel the new earth is here because going back to the quantum field, we are already spiraling. So some of us already are living in the new earth. We already are living in that place and we can move back and forth from the 5D to the 3D, which is exactly what I'm here to, to guide you into it because I have experienced it myself and I continue to refine this. This is not something that, ah, it happened and I'm done. I refine this every single day because we are all here no exceptions we are all here to master this we are all here to master really ascending with our physical being intact our physical body in reverence to that which is being created through you as source dreaming through you as you for you yes it's a bit of a mind bender but stay with me here because I can share these informations. However, what my, my true um, breakthrough has always been, not just for me, but also for my clients, is really when they felt it themselves in sacred ceremony. And I am really honored to share a small snippet of it because we don't have so much time together today. But if this is something you want to deepen into, I do have powerful tea ceremonies specifically to harness the dragons together coming up. So this is something you can check out in my website. Okay, so you can check that out in my link in my bio. And just give me a moment. I can hear the water boiling. And if you have any questions, please feel free to type it into the comments. Just going to put the water on. So this is a lovely setup that is for you today. You, you took a little peek. Um, we're gonna have a little tea ceremony to finish off today's session. So that's why I said, if you have a moment, please set up a sacred space for yourself. If you haven't already, you know, some of you signed up um, for the email notifications, so you would have known that this was going to happen. Um, just allow yourself to drop into the space, okay? And Barbara is saying, last night I dread that I was on the cast of the 1970s musical Hair and I was belting out the song, This is the dawning of the age of Aquarius. So uplifting. You dreamt. Okay, not dread. Okay, you dreamt that. All right. Oh, this is so amazing. This is so incredible. I am going to tell you this. So I have this mastermind called At Mystery Skate that I have such beautiful women in there. We are going to go deeper. We opened the space last week and we were talking about dream work. And it was just literally touching the tip of the iceberg. But dreams are literally messages from the stars, from your ancestors, from your deepest unconscious in your body your body speaking through your dreams with you as well. So this is the, the power of dreams. Like Barbara, that is such a, you know, a potent message and, and so beautiful. I love it. I absolutely love it. It's like the energy of singing, the energy of dancing. That's the vibe, guys. Like today's celebration, that's the vibe. So if I could, I, I don't know how it, it will go across for copyright, but if I could, I would have like literally blasted music all day long in the background as I speak. But just in case social media kicks me out because of copyright issues, I'm just, I'm just 
tuning it down a little bit here but if you have music bring it up share let me know what you're jiving to you know let's let's be in that field together okay so one thing i wanted to share is that um okay so there are some some things i wanted to share here that are going to be really out of this world i have been working with the dragons since last year around i would say end of november to uh, well yes i think it will be the end of november actually when the 11 11 portals opened and the dragons were coming in so strongly that my entire being up leveled like in like incredibly quickly and i was given this incredible oh i'm just gonna pause here because something amazing came up in the comments nicole was saying i was awake last night until 4 a.m and mary magdalene and two great rose dragons came to remind me of my work with the dragon lines exactly exactly this is so powerful guys like we are we are um this is what i know of as the cosmic fires and what we are doing right now, literally being in this space together, and as we drop in further into the, the deeper layers of our consciousness, so that we can rise back up through our, our subconscious into the superconscious, the cosmic mind, is that we are literally creating our reality now we are creating the fabric of re our re of our reality calling in the dragons the dragon's breath yes we are all here weaving the dragon's breath together and this is huge no matter what culture you come in from you know like nicole is coming in with a beautiful mary magdalene frequency and the celtic lands and I'm bringing in my culture through all the beautiful lunar um, uh, lunar cosmology and Chinese mythology. And actually, to be very honest, I think I, I'm, I was moving in a space where I, I don't even know. I don't think it's even attached to any cultures anymore because when I started to see the dragons, it was very, very clear there were two of them and they were one of them was coated in diamond diamond scales and the other is gold completely gold and i was looking into what the significance they, they they held and things like that and i actually was given a very clear message to to move away from other people's interpretation of what that dragon is and this is really huge because I'm a scholar. I love to delve into um, mysticism. I love to delve into other people's transmissions and all of that, as I'm sure most of you are. Um, but what really came through is that I want to, it, it's like, it's literally saying, be, be one with the dragon. You're not separate from the dragon. And when that happened, what happened for me was that I saw myself at that speed. I, I felt myself moving at the speed of that dragon. And it is almost like the feeling of at the beginning, it was the feeling of like, oh my gosh, I'm on a roller coaster. I'm going to puke because <laughs> it's so fast. It's so fast. And I was like, oh my God, everything felt so laser sharp. I was like, <gasps> you know, like, and, and to see from the omnipresence, the source, the, 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 the eye of the source. I was like, oh my God, oh my God. Like literally that was me. <laughs> so you can imagine like being on the magic carpet and you're like, oh my God, kill me now. <laughs> stop, stop. <laughs> and, and this is what I want to share with all of you guys because as I further deepen into the, the work of working with the dragon, as the one riding the dragon first, that's where we're going guys we have to anchor in our ability to master the ride and eventually be the dragon so that you can be at that exactly the pace is insane right it, this is what's going to happen everyone as the portal opens there will be a lot of energetic upgrades and we must be able to differentiate at least two things I can share here is the, and it is the, the training ground versus 
really true um, inverted matrix things that are happening that we are here to transmute. And what that really means is that the training ground for all of us as human beings here, as spiritual beings having a human experience, as the divinity having an experience here, you must remember this. All of us are all that is. And as all that is, there is limitlessness, right? Everything is one. So when uh, what I can, how I can put it is that when you look at the light and when you look at the darkness, they are one and the same thing as source. When you look as the all that is, okay? When you see yin and yang, you see it as one. It's a one thing. It's not separate from each other. There is no duality. It simply is. When you see it from all that is, which is who you are. You are a fractal of that. So what that really means is that when we come in and we, I love this beautiful, I believe it was a, a saying from Rumi himself, the beautiful mystic and poet. Um, we are being dreamed into life all of us and we are a dream of source and source is dreaming through us this is a beautiful way to maybe start to feel into what that brings up in you however for me i had a very very profound personal experience when i was walking through the isle of sky um, very very close to what is known as the fairy pools i had a moment when the goddess spoke to me very very distinctly saying that the goddess desires to the divine desires to to live through you and that was a huge moment that broke literally rippled through my entire being and it blew apart my mind in so many ways and i was initiated through a huge months and months of experiences that just didn't make any sense but i now know that it has led me to where I'm at here, where I could literally embody the omniscient, the, the eye of the source, and also cross back into 3D so that the whole training, let's put it that way, is not for us to rise, 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 rise into the formlessness and never, never have anything to show here. And this is something that is going to come to end. For all spiritual spiritual practitioners, spiritual mystical um, uh, devotees, people who are devoted to the spiritual aspects of our lives, let's put it that way, the, this is going to be an era of literally gold dripping off us. That's always been the truth. If you look at temples, if you look at churches, if you look at cathedrals that are that has been built many centuries ago, pyramids, they were made in gold. And these were symbols of our true abundance. Our true essence is abundance. And that is wealth. Wealth is innately you. There is no, no separation. And prosperity is innately you. And so when the dragons came into my, my field, it became very clear to me that peace and prosperity, they weave with each other. So when you, and this is where I love to come in with what I felt came through to me was so true and I felt it and became my vision. And now it's my mission and my purpose to bring forward this through my work is that every one of you are a sacred luxury sacred luxury because the frequency of the sacred is luxury we are infusing the sacred into every aspect of our lives luxury can be different for every one of you it is luxurious spaciousness for me it is having good food it is having high vibrational clothing colors things I use, 
things that I drink, thing, water that I shower myself with, these are luxury to me. And of course, education, mentorship, who do I work with, the clients I'm working with, they are all high level beings because that is my frequency standard. I do not ban or you know, lower my standard just because in my circumstance, somehow one person or two people came to me and said, maybe you are too much, right? And this is what we often do as human beings when we have human experiences like this, where maybe one out of 10 um, people who said you were amazing and one person said you, you suck and you said, yeah, I suck. <laughs> and then you stop doing everything that you love. Yes. So this is where you need to really come into what is my frequency standard? Like, who am I really? And who is this sacred luxury being that I'm hiding away that I'm not polishing up every day and showing my light to the world? Like, what aspect am I that I'm not showing to the world because what I want to bring forward to you is a question really of, yes, there are aspects of me maybe along the way as I awaken, as I heal my perceptions of the world. And when I say heal, I really mean you are healing your perception of the world. You don't need to be healed in any way because you are already whole and complete from the very beginning of source. Yes, you are source. You are divine. And I can say that over and over again until you actually anchor that in through experience, through activation. It will always feel like something you have to come back to maybe and look at a piece of paper and read a mantra or an affirmation. And if that's you, I would highly suggest that you come in, connect with me. Let's have a chat on how you can deepen into this work because all of us are here are poised to embody our divinity. There is no exception to your infinite power. All of us have this, all of us, and it is up to you how much of that you desire to allow into your physical dimension from the non-physical to physical you are the bridge you are the vessel and that's why when i work with a client i'm always saying i am here as the crystalline vessel for all that needs to stream through to stream through does my human self freak out sometimes about things that i said Yes, but also it's very tamed now. It's like, okay, I'm coming on for the ride. Back in the day, it was like, oh my God, I can't believe I said that. And what would they think? And, and now I'm just like, I show up the way I do with you, with my relatives that I meet at Christmas. <laughs> and they're like, this is a very interesting person. And the way she dresses is so interesting. And like, yeah. That's who I am. And I've never been more happy, never felt more impenetrable, clear, solid. And when I say impenetrable, I mean like really, you know, uh, like a Shaolin monk where they try to poke me somewhere and I'm like, okay, <laughs> it's totally cool. I'm good. And if I do feel the trigger, I can always return to the aspect of me who is the fractal of the divine and really go inward and ask myself, what did that activate? Let's be the alchemist here. Let's be the one who goes back to the zero point to reset my experience because you can always do that. You can always do that. And this is where I want to come in and share a little bit about the zero point field that I'm talking about, which is what I often call the vortex of stillness. Let's begin with this. I am a Chadao ceremonial keeper. So I work a lot with what I call tea. 
and you will call it tea but it's not tea bag so this is so funny i, I just i just met a really um incredible sister uh who came to visit me in scotland and she was like you should start a broadcast channel called this is not tea bag yo <laughs> like i was like yep this i can go on and on forever about this but basically these are ceremonial grade tea leaves from indigenous tea trees these tea trees have been around for at least 200 100 years some of them actually have been around and i had the honor to experience one from tea trees that are about 5,000 years old. And it's just so incredible to be able to experience something so high vibrational. And it's high vibrational not just because the trees were grown in such a, a, a pristine environment, but also because it's been taken care of and honored as an ancestor, guys, like seriously honored as ancestors by the farmers, by the artisans, families that have carried this tradition and the secret formula to creating these leaves, these tea, for centuries. And so it really got me thinking like, how can we infuse the sacred into our modern way of living? How have we become so disconnected from the great spirit, Mother Earth, the cosmos. How did everything become so watered down to when we look at the stars, we literally are just thinking, ah, I'm a Capricorn or you're a Scorpio and here's my human design. I'm, I respect all of these modalities, by the way, I use them myself. But here's a real question is that when can we come back to sensing the field, sensing the subtle energies in the field and knowing what exactly is going on, trusting our intuitive guidance, being the master embodied. And of course, every master has a master. And that's why I always say this, whether you work with me or another mentor, work with a mentor, work with a teacher, because it will fast track you compared to days when you're sitting at your YouTube and trying to figure out all different modalities and trying to figure out why is this Qigong master doing this this way and then this Qigong master is doing it that way. You know what I mean? And I've been there myself and this is why I can speak so candidly about it. You can spend ages practicing on yourself and you would have no idea, no idea, no experience of that, that true anchored, embodied, transcendental, let's put it that way, because your mind is blown at that point, with a mentor who's done it before, a mentor who's carrying traditions and rituals and, and even memories, because we all are fractals of the divine and we are timeless. So we keep coming back for a certain reason and we carry that with us when we come back. And Barbara is saying, I am sitting right now with my, yes, the Camellia Sinensis, amen, yes, I love that we're bringing, Barbara, you're bringing in the Camellia Sinensis, perfect. This is, um, this is essentially the scientific name for the tea that I work with. However, of course, there are so many different Camellia Sinensis types that we're talking about, the varietals and things like that. So that's a general way of speaking. And there are many, many more that I, I love to speak about that I do share inside of my mentorship space called Chadao for the multidimensional woman. So going back to the tea leaves, why do I, why did I bring that up? So when we work in a space where we want to drop into, and I'm sure you're asking, you're probably asking the question or I will answer it anyway and if you have a question please feel free to drop that in by the way I just want to remind you all that is perfectly welcome but you may be asking okay this all sounds so good I want to create my own reality I want to embody source I want to be the divine self 
walking through here in my human form. I want to experience wealth. I don't want to hold myself back anymore. I want to have the most amazing business relationship, blah, 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 blah. Okay. So how do I do that? Right? The answer is to bring yourself back to a place where you can experience yourself as source. And that is what I call the vortex of stillness. This is your reset point. This vortex of stillness is true mastery. It really is true mastery. That's why we, when I, when I was given the mandate by T in one ceremony I, I attended, I heard T Spirit speak to me, the first ceremony actually I ever had, um, and I heard her speak to me, you have to drop everything you know and go and serve T. And I went into apprenticeship, I went into learning the techniques, and then it continues to open doors into different things. So I can tell you that I went into an apprenticeship, and then it opened the door into meeting the master of my teacher, and then I met the master of the master, and then eventually it led me to last year to the Shaolin temples, where I met my teacher. And then now I'm working with my teacher in the Shaolin temples and God knows what else is going to come. This is how amazing, this is how powerful it is when we move and we trust even when we are in the unknown. And I can tell you 100%, I had no idea. I did not come from a family of tea makers. I did not come from a family who even drank tea regularly. And even if they drank tea, they were like, or gray or you know flavored strawberry tea you know so that was me leading up to the point where i sat in that sacred ceremony and all the cellular memories came back all the feeling of i'm home now came back and this is an experience that you may be able to have in different ways it doesn't have to be tea but this is where i come in and say tea spirit has a way of calling her her sages, her priestesses in. And this is why there is Chadao for the multidimensional woman. And I love that, Barbara. You're like 3D handmaiden. Yes, you are. You are. And this is where I, I want to, oh my gosh, there's so much to share. You got me so fired up. But basically, I had this vision where I was communing with the, the cosmic tree um, and the herb garden of the Queen Mother of the West. And she is infamous for being the bridge, you know, she creates the rainbow bridge. She's the one who dictates the movements of the cosmos. She's the one who dictates life and death and rebirth. And she also has this beautiful tree, the axial tree that stands in between heaven and earth. And it bears the peaches of immortality. And oh my goodness, I've been working with her so deeply in the field that I was able to actually see through into a vision of the tea tree. I knew it was the tea tree, but I don't think it was called the tea tree at that point in the timeline. Completely upended, so the roots are facing upward and the branches are facing downward. And I heard this beautiful whisper from, from her. It wasn't a whisper, but it was a beautiful weaving of voices speaking to the queen mother of the west asking her to be you know asking for leave that was what i heard asking for leave to come into earth to serve to be with the humans to share with the humans her wisdom and bring forth the truth of who they are as cosmic beings through her veins <sighs> and i was so moved to tears like i was literally i and, and it was a moment of clarity when I was there watching this unfold and it wasn't it was right out of the tea ceremony it wasn't in the tea ceremony that I saw it and this is why I always say you live in ceremony this is the ripple effect of the ceremony you don't just go into the ceremony and you feel la 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 and then that is it you ripple out that power of source energy in your entire being, through your vision, through your actions, through your voice. Yeah, if you have seen me, 
maybe, I don't know, eight years ago, I, I wouldn't be sitting here with you, talking to you here right now. I was anorexic, filled with all kinds of eating disorder, bullshit in her head, you know, wanting her body to look a certain way so that people would love her. And I was terrified of public speaking. I was terrified. When I was a child, I stood on the stage and everyone was staring at me and I was like, I totally blanked on the stage, looking out to, I don't know, God knows hundreds of students. And that was the most terrifying experience that informed many years of my life. And I was so hung up on how my accent would sound and all of those things. And now I'm sitting here like, you know what? If you love me, you love me. If you don't, it's okay. And that's all good because those are my alchemical points where I can always choose to go higher. And I want this for every single one of you. I truly want this for every single one of you. And when I say that, I literally mean it as I want you to see that it's available for you because it is already here. You don't have to change anything about your circumstance. And that is where that is where your power comes in. And then you get to decide, okay, am I willing to be devoted to the truth of who I am? And that in that devotion, it really means taking the actions that are so aligned with the truth of who you are and yet feels really scary, maybe like really expansive, yes, for you. And you know this is the right way, but the unknown feels Mm, okay, nerve-wracking for the mind. That's where you are meant to go. That's where the rewards ripple through your entire field at a light speed. I have had clients who just come in, like drop in to spaces immediately because she knows it's the right thing. And she moved, even though there is like... I have no idea what she's going to do in the space. I, I just know that I want to work with T. I just know that I need to work with her and that's it. And so this is something you want to work with. And of course, the importance I must place on is regulating your nervous system. Okay. And I have spoken about this many times before and I will speak about it again. You do not ever need to force your ascension journey. What that means and could look like in the physical dimension is, you know, um, okay, I'm just going to say it. You may go on a plant medicine journey that is psychedelic and that could be a forcing through. It could be. It may not be, but it could be because now you're breaking open something that wasn't ready to be met yet. And when I say it's not ready, it means that your energy, your frequency is not there yet. It's not embodied. And that's why they, there are oftentimes stories of crashing and burning afterwards. The embodiment piece is so important. And that starts with you setting your frequency standard. That's why I keep talking about you experiencing yourself as all that is. And then having the support of the integral role of the sacred medicine like tea, which is, by the way, adaptogenic. So it's not psychedelic. So it's a very gentle, but it's really strong medicine that will support you on this journey. However, what happens is that it is there to anchor in the, the intention for your light body activation. And that vibrational frequency, that exquisite frequency of the leaves that I spoke about, it is served in this space to work with you and the ceremonial keeper, me, along with the connections we have with the cosmos ancestors to create an energetic pattern that support this activation. And then, this is the cool part, the participant and the ceremonial keeper, which is me, we come together. I'm just going to imagine you and me together here, all of you in the field. We are the ceremony. 
we are the ceremony that opens the portals to tap into our vortex of stillness. And this vortex of stillness can oftentimes be nothingness. It is nothingness because everything exists and therefore there is nothing. Yes? And this is the field of your original nature. That is who you are. That which is limitless potential. Everything exists here. So you come into this field together in the ceremony with me. And this is where you get to master. And that's where I guide you through. You master the ability to sense and feel subtle energies and come into harmony with the natural flow of the cosmos. Because when you flow in tandem, in alignment with who you truly are, you bring that from the non-physical into the physical dimension. And this natural flow of the cosmos, I'm just going to come out and say this. Many of you probably have this already and you're doing this. You may be very aligned with Mother Earth. You can feel the wind. You can speak to the plants. You can... You are a magician when it comes to these things. Yes? I want to say this. What's coming in with this powerful dragon energy is that it is going to go beyond being able to land here and be at one with Mother Earth. You can go beyond becoming more conscious about animals, plants, what you eat. All of those things are so important. And... You get to open your embodied wisdom as a galactic portal to connect deeply with all elements, multidimensional realms, timelines, and you merge with the divine mind that open up access to seeing yourself and your place in the, the, the world, in this dimension. And this is where you want to go. And then you can return into the 3D. This is what I always say. We want to be infusing all networks with our magic. We're not here to just play small behind the scenes. We are here to create paradise. Exactly, Barbara. I want to create paradise on Earth by building plant conservatories to house camellias and other plant species. Can the dragons help me? Of course. You are the dragon, Barbara. You are the dragon and the dragon is you, Barbara. All of us have a dragon, maybe two, <laughs> maybe more. And you can always summon that energy up in that zero point field, in that vortex of stillness to move with you at the speed of light. And as we are gathered here today, we are literally all moving at that speed in and funneling it into a channel that is so pristine i can feel it already now we're coming in and we're connecting with this divine mind together and as someone else elevates you're going to be elevated as well and we move together we move together and barbara with what you just said this is exactly it we are creating the paradise in our vortex of stillness. Yes, we're there in that zero point field. We're creating it. And then when we move out of state, when we come back into the body, which is very important, everyone, you have to anchor this new frequency in the body with specific things that we do in my world. We do that through tea. We do that through breath work. Um, we do that through activations and movements as well. I teach Qigong and also some really sacred yoga mo movements that date back to the Egyptian times. We want to bring it forth in physicality. And that means it will come through you like Barbara saying, ah, I want to build plant conservatories to house camellias and other plant species. Maybe for you out there, someone else out there is like, ah, I need to start opening uh, circles for mothers to help them know that they deserve their quality time, that they are also sacred luxury. Yes, maybe. Mm -hmm. 
and then you can all feel free to drop in your most sacred vision because that will anchor in something truly powerful as you speak it aloud and share it makes it real you know and that's that's not saying this is the thing this is the funny thing okay i'm gonna tell you this what's real is actually unseen the unseen you is the real you and what we are seeing in the physical world is literally the tip of the iceberg and when we speak when we share it becomes quote unquote real physical meaning that's it in this dimension and why do i keep saying that because you chose to come to this dimension even though you may have forgotten why but you chose to come to this dimension for a very specific purpose and you're here to execute that basically and when we are swayed by you know the the the, the training and we if we don't know these things let's just put it that way if we didn't own the fact that we are fractals of the divine the training ground here on earth will become very very challenging because you keep thinking and this is the real really one the only reason i believe you will keep thinking that everything's working against you which is not it isn't all of these challenges are transmutable all of them are alchemical points that you can jump into the higher timeline through that have you ever, and if you don't believe me, I will ask you this question. Have you ever had like a really dark night of the soul? Really dark, really challenging, like literally I'm going to kill myself. That was me at one point. And then you put a message out there into the world, like literally save me or help or I don't know what it is anymore. I surrender. And something comes through really quickly. Really quickly. It may not stay for long. Sometimes it was there for a very specific reason, perhaps to retrieve you out of that place for you to continue journeying on. We all have that. That is the alchemical portal that you literally just said, I'm choosing higher in your own way. And now, as we come into this higher consciousness, we get to really learn that, ah, I don't need to hit rock bottom to get to the point where I open up a portal to a higher timeline. Nobody is here to save us. We don't have to be saved. We are sovereign, cosmic, divine royalty. All of us no exceptions and as you go into that vortex of stillness and you enter the nothingness you merge as one with the unified field or source you get to create your reality in this dimension you possess the super consciousness now to move between worlds from the seen to the unseen from 3d to 5d and back until the collective mass is strong enough to rise into the next dimension all together and this is what we're here to do multi-dimensional women beautiful women beautiful beings all of us literally the sacred union of the feminine and the masculine there is no exceptions here if we are able to tap into that we literally have a privilege and we have the responsibility to continue to bring this forth in all ways we're not here to hide our light stop hiding your multi-dimensionality if you can move between worlds claim that share that if you can see auras claim that share that if you can hear voices, if you can tap into multi-dimensional multi timelines, you can speak to different beings on other star system, claim that and bring that into your quote-unquote mundane spaces because only you can bring the extraordinary into the ordinary. This is what T has been doing all her life here for centuries bringing the extraordinary into the ordinary infusing your system so that you become one with tea and you begin to look at the world 
through her eyes, seeing the extraordinary in the ordinary, feeling the subtle energies, and starting to create your own. Because you are now anchoring in higher dimensional energies through mastering the art of mirroring these frequency patterns that you accessed or created in the vortex of stillness and mirror that in the physical dimension. That's it. That's it. It is a major identity shift, yes. Releasing the idea that I need to turn to something outside of me. Yes, Barbara. Because you are that. You are all that is. You are the dragon. You are the one riding the dragon. And you are the one who is conjuring up the dragon. The dragon has been waiting for a long time, everyone. And it's time to unleash the dragon. To unfurl our fire into the skies. And send a signal out to the realms beyond that we are so fucking ready we are so ready to ride this multi-dimensional wave to be that wave to be the one because we've always been the one <laughs> Samantha. we are the dragon and i think I will walk into the ceremony in a bit, but I did see something here that um, Samantha mentioned and it's so interesting. So I'm going to come in here with my perspective with that and you can take it or leave it. But slay that dragon is also something that was created in the inverted matrix, let's put it that way, to make us fear the dragon, which is ourselves. It's the same thing as how the snake has always been an Ouroboros, I, I'm pronouncing it really badly, but like the infinite um, spiral of time, the snake shedding its skin, all of these are part of the darker unconscious aspects of who we are, which we must embrace as part of our wholeness. We can't just say all light, all light, all light, just as it is in the, um, and some of you may recognize that as a Luciferian um, frequency where it's all about mental construct, all about just intellectual properties, all about just knowledge, but there is no heart, there's no love, there's nothing infused in that. And that is where we drop into this control system where they made certain things like uh, dragons are bad or snakes are bad or um, the dark feminine is bad you know or even the story of Mary Magdalene that is resurfacing so uh, resurfacing so powerfully now for a very good reason these are all darker aspects that we are now embracing in our devotion to walking as the whole being that we really are the wholeness that we've always been the source energy that all that is all that is so going back to what i said at the beginning when we look at light and dark it's unity that we see when we look at yin and yang it's unity that we see when we see winter and summer it's unity that we see we don't see we we see that we acknowledge the difference because we are in the dimension of duality yes because that's important for physical things to come through. For example, if you set a frequency standard that I am no, uh, uh, okay, let's put it this way for me personally, I set the frequency standard that I am a divine royalty in human form. Yes, I am divine royalty in human form. So that's my frequency standard. So if anything comes into my field, that is not a match to that frequency standard. It's really interesting because things just don't even come into my field. I was talking to one of my clients here, Becky, that she saw something on social media and I literally said to her, oh, actually, I, I didn't even see anything of that. And it's interesting to see that, including other things that I won't recall all of them here, but to see that once I set, when I, once I set that standard, 
it doesn't even appear in my field because it's not my standard, right? Yes, Erin, I love that you said this. Let's see. Yes, remember, it's always a knight who goes to slay the dragon, the darkness of male-led power, being in fear of our amazing power. Exactly. Exactly. It's women. Oh, full chills, Erin. We are remembering. And in this remembrance, what's happening for all of us is that we are taking it even higher into sacred union because it is the power of sacred union the union of the masculine and feminine that is going to create a reality beyond this paradigm that we even know of, we ever knew of. It is with sacred union that we materialize the frequency of love. And the frequency of love is the highest frequency of all to create. And this is to circle back to the alchemical portals that I spoke about in challenging times. Do that with the frequency of love and compassion. If you can't in the moment, allow yourself to have grace for yourself. Lots of that. And then when you can master up the frequency of love, and that's a very powerful state you get to drop into in the vortex of stillness, with tea, this is a powerful, like tea is a heart opener. Tea has always been a shen tonic, which means it is a spirit tonic. So it drops in the north star, so to speak, from above into your heart and it opens back that up and your eyes will twinkle, your heart is open, you're receiving, you're listening, you're dropping deep in. So it's a powerful anchor point for anyone who wants to work with that. But when you drop into the frequency of love, creations, they happen so quickly. Your circumstances rearrange so quickly. And it is here where you stand and you continue to embody and walk as and talk, do, act, be that divine royalty in all ways. No wavering, no questioning, literally everything is going to shift for you so quickly. No, no disrespect at all, Erin. Exactly. This is what's happening for all of us. We are really here that we are truly coming together into unity consciousness. There's no saying, you're bad, I'm here, nah, we're rah. We are And if we can begin to see life in that way more and more and more, imagine the kind of love that we're infusing into the world. Imagine how the sacred is infused into every single thing again. And this is where we come back into the point where I spoke about you are sacred luxury. And I say that why? Because if you hear luxury and you are like, oh God, luxury, that's not for me or um, in especially in spiritual world, I'm gonna drop that. I don't. I don't wear anything that's sick, like luxury. I don't need that. I can just live in my 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 grass hut. I want to share with you that when you are able to accept the fact that you're living in a grass hut, and also the people who are spiritual and wearing the most, like the big luxury brands and the Ford, the private jets and things like that, when you can do that. That's unity consciousness. And it's also you embodying your true frequency of wealth because that is who you are. That has always been all of us. Again, like the, you know, um, the slaying of the dragon. We've been told that we don't have wealth, that we have to work damn hard to earn it. And all of these things are so not true. And I, I love that there's this master that once spoke of this. There is abundance. There could be an abundance of lack. Or an abundance of abundance. Abundance of wealth. Abundance of love. Abundance of the sacred. And it's so true. There is abundance. Wait a minute. Get clear. Abundance of what? Abundance of lack? Yes. 
So we have to be fully here to claim this. I am divine royalty. I am wealth. And it can materialize in different ways for all of us. Yeah, I don't live in a mansion, but I have the dream house of my entire life that came in so quickly. And I have a loving husband. I have a business that I love. Yes, I don't have tens and thousands of clients, but I love every single one of my clients. And my reviews, my testimonials are 100%. <laughs> I can tell you that. And it's with this frequency that I would love to drop you into the peace and prosperity codes that are weaving through right now in my kettle, in the tea leaves that are coming through. So if you'd like to join me in ceremony, let's have a bowl together and then we can close off today's ceremony, okay? And I'm just gonna drop into a comment that just popped up. Nicole is saying, it's true and sometimes it takes longer. Deciding to be the embodiment of love doesn't always equal speed exactly one needs to be able to hold the frequency. It goes back to exactly what I said, Nicole, beautiful, that you do not ever, and you must not, yeah, force your, um, force your quote unquote, breakthroughs and awakening. There are lots of people who are doing that, which I will really not recommend. Um, I would highly recommend coming into a mentorship space where you're being held in such a sacred way where you're not um, forced into being something that you are not exactly ready for. And this goes for everyone because all of us come with a different divine blueprint. We have a different journey, all of us. And that's why it's so important for all of us to stop comparing with each other because all of us are different. There is no comparison, never been, no competition, never been, ever. We are all different, just like every leaf is different every tree is different and so beautiful for bringing that up Nicole and also I will wrap it up by saying you get to choose you get to choose yes you get to choose at every alchemical point to go higher to always choose higher and what that means is it could look like giving yourself all the freaking love in the world that you haven't had because you thought you needed that love from outside of you. It could look like giving yourself a break, <sighs> taking time out to give yourself true attention on what your body needs. It could be really rising to the game, rising to that standard and taking a bold step ahead because I can tell you this, if you're an entrepreneur, if you are out there leading and as a leader, you have to take this, this first step forward first. A lot of times as leaders, you won't be seeing what you desire reflected to you first. It's so important to remember that because it really helped me in my journey when I was like, why isn't anyone talking about this? Why isn't anyone doing things like that? When I launched Cha Dao for the multidimensional woman and nobody signed up. Yes, it's like, am I doing something wrong? Or am I doing something that's truly pioneering? And then now I'm starting to get people coming out of the woodworks telling me, sharing my reels and sharing my social media posts and saying, I felt that too. And this includes males, by the way, men. And it's like, we have to talk more about this. Why isn't anyone talking about this? Why isn't anyone talking about working with tea in this way? Yeah, the rose frequency, the Mary Magdalene frequency didn't come forward until many years later. And now it's in full, full force and I think there is more to come and this is because there has never been a waiver in her devotees, in her disciples, her priestesses and that energy is so powerful. The sacred union that is coming through is so powerful. 
yeah it goes beyond your relationships by the way when i speak about sacred union i'm literally talking about manifestation coming through sacred union within you and that sacred union is wholeness it truly is with love when there is love anything is possible it's a cliche but a very true cliche <laughs> okay so i'm going to put some music on and have an opening ceremony for today if you're with me here and if you like to join me you can also have three incense sticks with you if you have if not all good i'll do it with you for you through me just to honor your ancestors to honor heaven above the cosmic emperors and the queen mother of the west Guan Yin, if you want to, or anyone, Mary Magdalene, whatever the Ascended Masters you work with, and Earth. Earth where the crystalline unconsciousness lingers, the Dark Goddess, the, the parts of us that we're here to retrieve through our body, and it will come to us in our dreams. So this is to open our night eyes, and this is to open our day eyes, and to unite with our ancestors and receive their guidance and of course with tea together as our spirit our guardian and our mother pure divine mother okay all right let's see
Okay. Let's see. Thank you so much for joining me for a sacred moment with tea. How's everyone feeling? I'd like to share in the comments for any deeper activations and experiences you are so welcome to check into the 10th of February tea ceremony that's coming up 
that will be beautiful and you can absolutely check into the link in my bio for things that are happening in my world or just reach out connect you're so welcome to drop into that frequency together with me we're all here to really rise and the first and foremost thing to really do is to clear out any sense of heaviness or density with love and you are truly the sacred you are absolutely sacred you are sacred luxury in fact uh thank you mellow much love and gratitude to you as well thank you Ruthann. that was beautiful very peaceful ah oh, thank you Roseanne, beautiful, powerful, sacred. I'm grateful to be present for this. And thank you for being here. Thank you for all of you holding that grid for all of us here. We just created some powerful, sacred geometry together. It is all happening. It is absolutely happening. Ah, thank you. Oh, Barbara. Jasmine tea and incense. Bless you as well. Thank you, Erin. Thank you so much. Tea across the universe. I could feel that liquid and leaves. Yes. I would so love to have all of you come in. I'm doing a diptych tea ceremony experience. So you can absolutely join me. We're going to work a lot deeper than this, obviously, together in ceremony, in activations, working with the dragon energy. And so, yes. Um, Erin. Can you say quickly again what the three pieces of incense that I'm currently... <laughs> I love this. Yes. So, <clears throat> three is always a number whenever we honor our ancestors at the altar. And specifically, one is for the heavens above. So the cosmos, the cosmic you as well, source. And then another for earth. So it really bounds with, you know, traditionally it always is about... Being safe when you drive, you know, make sure everyone who's here connected to you are safe and, you know, peace and you as well as the earthly being. And then, of course, honoring Mother Earth. And then the third one is to your ancestors. So this could be your light ancestors or ancestors that you actually know of that have passed on to the other realm. It's all for them. And, 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 and also, it's quite interesting because as my grandparents passed we had more incense so each incense is for them so i literally when i'm home i would honor them with uh, there would be about five incenses burning at the same time actually thank you roseanne uh thank you and nicole mm, okay i i'm not sure what conversation that's been about but it sounds like the path is cleared perfect and Barbara, thank you, thank you, thank you. I love this energy. This is so, so beautiful. And ah, I'm just so ah, full of gratitude and love. So thank you so much for being here. And absolutely feel free to reach out, connect. I love you all so much. We're here to do this. Thank you, Nicole. This has been amazing as always. Thank you so much. Everyone else. If you want to ask any questions, Becky, love this time with you today. Yes, I love this as always, always, always. And Erin is saying, I will be meeting my 80-year-old mother, wow, in Thailand for her birthday on the 10th. Ah, uh, okay. There will be a replay and also because it's a diptych uh, tea ceremony experience, you will get another experience with me on the 24th and you'll get the replay and you'll get full access to my tea mystic collective which means you get the sacred tea set you get the vault of master classes it's all there for you my love just say yes baby this is what we do as multi-dimensional leaders we go first and everything else will unfold nothing's going to stand in our way i have a beautiful client here she's probably still here she would always say like nothing is going to stand in my way even if the sacred tea set is delayed even if the customs are holding it. Nothing is going to stand in my way. And Erin, yes, I do in-person work in Edinburgh. Definitely uh, bespoke. 
I'm going to roll out some retreats as well, luxurious sacred luxury retreats are coming up in Edinburgh. So stay tuned for that. Yes, mellow, unity, peace, and love to all. Ah, love, 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 love. Else, I see you. I see you. <laughs> oh my goodness, I love you all so much. My heart is so swelling. Like, I'm, I don't want to go, but I know we're going to connect in the dream world. I have this feeling. And allow your dragon to rise, okay? Let your dragon come through. Make the decision that is the power move that is going to help you to anchor in the truth of who you are, which is all that is. Divine royalty in human form. And I'm here to support you. Reach out if you need any uh, advice on what to go into, mentorship spaces to tap into, all of that. Okay? I love you all so much. Oh my goodness. All right, all right. I don't see any more questions. So here we are, complete. And I will see some of you in the next tea ceremony experience. I love you all. Mwah. Thank you, thank you, thank you so, so much. And bye.